Well, it was supposed to be glory, glory, but no, the Warriors they didn't have a, a bar of that. Let's check it all out. Warriors Anonymous. Let's go. This is Warriors Anonymous. Woohoo! Three in a row, the Warriors. The one New Zealand Warrior has picked up another win. Good one on the road to break a drought of about eight straight losses to the South Sydney Rabbitohs in the NRL. So, uh, wow. Jerry Crone and Daniel Fatakura, Isaac Sass and Moneta Sass on deck to talk all about it on this episode. Everyone's just got a little bit of a smile on their face, I can tell. Boys, how are we all going? It's, uh, it, was, it was a wonderful occasion uh, on Saturday. Roger Tuivasa-Shek's 200th match. And uh, you got to try as well. Got me, got me thinking. Uh, we'll do a quick short balls to get us underway. Uh, we'll start with you, Moneta. What is your favourite RTS moment? Oh, it was way back when he was playing for the Roosters and he did that shimmy on the sideline. We're finding like a centimetre that seemed like he had left of the field and he just went around the winger and then, yeah. yeah. I can't remember which team I think it was, it was against the Storm, eh, that one? Storm. Yeah, the Storm. Yeah. That was yeah. the one. It was just like, whoa, what the yeah. hell? <laughs> he made the guy think he was going inside and then he just stepped around yeah. like on a 10-set yeah. piece. Like... Hardly any space to move and then he scored a freakish try. Oh, yeah, that's a good that's a good one. I love I love going through Roger's highlights every once in a while. Isaac, what is your favourite RTS moment? Ooh, it's a toss up between the try he scored to win the game against the I think it was the, was it the Knights a Newcastle. while ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah, with um Lolo here, but yeah. uh, putting him away. Oh no, it was against the Roosters. Mm, it was against roosters. the Roosters that oh, game. The roosters. Yeah, it was the yeah. Roosters. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. And that was like in the last minute of the game. Uh or that Carnival try that he scored <laughs> against Canberra when the ball went through about three sets of the whole team's hands. Uh, That's right. For him to score. That was just yeah, ridiculous. We were wearing those, was it the, the black and um, grey kind of uniforms? I remember. I saw that one <laughs> pop up recently. Someone shared it and I was like, oh my gosh. The, the phase went on for about three and a half minutes. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's good, buddy. That's good. Buddha, what's your, uh, what's your favourite Roger moment? Uh, I think it's a uh, kind of combination, one that Monty doesn't mention, but also that one that Isaac mentioned. When I think it is against the Roosters, he goes through. But what I love about it, not only I think it won the game, but he does kind of like a break dancing kind of javelin into yes. the ground and then <laughs> yeah. springs back up. Yes. And it yeah. just, just shows like immense strength and agility to kind of, you know, do a reverse caterpillar off the ground. Mm. So just he's, how, he's how part acrobat, eh, Rog? Yeah. yeah. And also, that, there's, one, there's one more. I have is that he's a real gentleman. Um, when he pulled down, when he pulled down D uh pants, yeah, and he politely put them back up while I tried not to laugh. So yeah. that yeah. memory sticks out in my head yes. too. And that hundred percent helped Dylan Walker sign on with the Warriors. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm certain of it. Uh, I'm going to go uh, one as well. Thankfully, it hasn't been mentioned. I thought you fellas would have gone with this one. It's uh, it was a match winner. Uh, he didn't have the ball. Though. He uh, dived oh, for the corner. Yes. The oh, Superman dive to stop. That. Yeah, Jordan Rapana scoring oh, uh, in yes. the last second where it looked like we were dead and buried. Um, but yeah, some great moments uh, for Roger across his career. Man, what, a, what an absolute legend. I enjoyed seeing um, Chance after the game. Got interviewed and he was like, bro, RTS is my favourite player. <laughs> 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 so it's pretty cool. Now, um, as mentioned, uh, we did break the streak. Thank the Lord. The bunnies, uh, their, their reign over us. Uh, is now at an end, well, at least for now anyway. Um, but uh, how good was it to, to break that drought against those uh, those wastly rabbits? Yeah, you know, 50 rabbits up your ass, call yourself Warren. Um, <laughs> look, I think most fans just wanted to get the, the hoodoo out the way. You know, it's a team that has traditionally troubled us and they've got a lot of firepower, so it is nice to kind of bat them away and then... We were disappointed with how that result went last year, where they just kind of took us to town and ground and pounded us uh, at back home. So, um, yeah, I think caveat, though, is it's not a strong Bunnies team. So let's just put that out there. And I don't want to be uh, negative. I'm not going to say Nigel Nancy or anything like that. I just want to be that guy. But they aren't flash at the moment for a whole host of reasons. But you never know with a team like uh, the Bunnies. Good to get it um, squared away, a uh, victory against them. Um, and I did see a post as well saying, glory, glory to South Auckland. So I love that one. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Richie Morgan from Warrior Nation. Well, the the nation was there. Man, it was good seeing him um, banging on the drum at the ground with a whole bunch of supporters, you know, chanting out Warriors. It looks like they had a, an awesome time. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was also kind of early early doors in that game. It was a little bit worrying because <laughs> they were chucking it wide and, and absolutely skinning us out wide. And I was like, oh, here we go. It's happening again for some reason, but um, but it's all good. Uh, things did get underway, and Isaac, we'll throw to you, Ray, for this next one. Uh, you know, what were the reasons behind us? You know, things finally seem to start clicking just a little bit more than they have been. Beats the hell out of me, man. I, I think <laughs> for the past few weeks, anyway, we've um, we're not been we haven't been far away. You know, we, we've been getting closer and closer, and maybe apart from the first ten minutes of that game, um, we were pretty much. Dominant, you know, maybe, for 10, maybe the first 10 or 20 minutes when they looked like they were going to skin us on the left hand side and Chance got stepped back on the inside for that one try. Um, but I think after that they seemed to settle and then just got into the groove of it and then just let South Sydney make their own mistakes with, you know, big Latrell having a few brain explosions, which I think we should talk about later on <laughs> as well. But I don't think the Warriors have been far away from clicking and this just so happened to be the game where it all decided to come together. They were just patient, patient, patient. They just let the game come to them and then stuck to their game plan and then everything just fired, which just shows that they don't have to push it. When they when they don't try to push the footy around or push the agenda, the game just comes naturally to them. Well, that's the mm. way I saw it. Yeah, and it seems to come naturally to uh, to certain players as well, who we will uh, we'll definitely cover off a, a few of them. Uh, one of them is uh, is Roger Tui uh celebrated his his milestone match. Got a try. Uh, just generally looked, you know, looked like Roger doing doing some good things. Even though he was, you know, bumped out this time out onto the right wing, going old school. Uh, but Moneda, how important is Roger to our team overall? Um, I think not only on the field. Um, some of the players we're talking about off the field, he just has that true professionalism about him. So. I guess when they see someone like him uh, train the house down, they want to do the same. And I think uh, with the mix of him and C and K, uh, Sean Johnson, that competitive uh, nature they have, I think it kind of brings up the whole team. So I think not only does he bring the skills to on the field, but off the field, he brings a lot also. Yeah, um, I, it makes you wonder about that, um, was it the reverse caterpillar you said before, Buddha, uh, that Roger can do? <laughs> I wonder if his teammates are like, can you do that, bro? Because, <laughs> you know, just as a, as a casual uh, observer, I'd, I'd be keen to try and, you know, I mean, I wouldn't like to try it, but it'd be, it'd be interesting to know the, at least the mechanics behind it. Um, now, we, we followed our blueprint again, obviously, the Warriors, and that is uh, a strong kick and chase over to the corners. We just peppered um, through the bowl, Thompson, all day. All day, just boom, 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 straight down to him. Um, but, uh, like, you know, what did you think uh, about us following that plan as we have done all year? I look at it, that plan and it takes me back to, uh, and you boys might get this, Street Fighter days, right? <laughs> so, you know when you're playing Street Fighter, there's a certain pattern with each of the each of the characters that you stick to, you know, whether it's um, fireball, fireballs, get them, get them slightly dizzy days, come over the top and the three punch combo, uppercuts, like uh, <laughs> Guile, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, bring them in, punch, punch, they come over and you do a flip kick. They're just... <laughs> We have a way of playing, which part of me looked back and I go, is it slightly boring? If it is, I don't give a shit because we just put it down there and we, just, we back up the tackles, we keep them there, we pin them down there. They bolted and then we just go to work. So, yeah, maybe if I'm thinking about teams that play us, they might be like, oh, they're cheating because they're just doing the game really well. And, you know, when you when you play someone else and they just do the basics really well and you get frustrated, and we're just frustrating the shit out of everyone because kick to the corner and we keep them there and they just had to be, they were turning around off their goal line or 10 metre line for the second half in particular and they just got gassed and, you know, they had no, nothing. You know, nothing that even Tamati could just float through and score that last try right because yeah the bunnies were done so um it works it's simple it's penrith football we know it's penrith football for some reason other teams don't really want to do all of that all the time we'll do it and we'll get the chocolates you, you're actually um you're bringing a couple of things to mind uh, first of all 
that uh, because Andrew Webster is in a similar age bracket to us fellas, maybe at some point he was playing that game and he was like, hang on a second, I could use this for, uh, for my coaching uh, you know, uh, methods. Uh, also, uh, you mentioned as well about how we just do the simple basics, boom, 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 just bombard you all day with the same thing. It also reminds me of like a million discussions that have, have ever taken place uh, and, uh, at a, arcades or, or dairies or wherever with street, uh, street Fighter machines where you go into a one-on-one -on -one match and there's an agreement at the start, no cheapies. <laughs> <laughs> no cheapies. <laughs> no cheapies. <laughs> Can I get cheapies. seconds? <laughs> seconds, Jake. Seconds, Jake. No cheapies. <laughs> <laughs> well, no guess cheapies. what? We're all grown up now, and cheapies, uh, cheapies are fine. We, we love the cheapies. cheapies um, <laughs> what the, uh, one thing we don't love is, uh, is injuries. Um, Isaac, we, we racked up a bit of uh, extra collateral damage, even before the game um, this week. Um, Dallin out with a bit of a hammy issue. Not a, not a long-term thing. Uh, Marathon Nukore, about an eight-week suspected um, foot injury, which is a, a bad one. Uh, and, and Dylan Walker also again um, another a scratching, so we're not sure exactly when he's due back. But uh, is I it a bit Marattas, of a worry that we? Oh, sorry, it? I just heard Marattas was a bit of a freak accident, eh? Stood on yeah. another foot or something like that, and like rolled his ankle. Yeah, whoever I don't know, whoever got their big foot in the way needs to <laughs> get fined at one of those court sessions. But um, yeah, who's got the uh, iron foot? To get stepped on and break someone else's or someone else's foot. Yeah, a sizable foot too. I mean, geez, he's he's a big boy, Marata. But um, but yeah, Isaac, how worried are you about uh, the the injuries that are you know kind of racking up? I know every team is is getting a bit of a run of it, but um, but for us in particular, yeah, well, it, it's just the nature of the game. But after the weekend's effort, I don't know. I'm not too fussed. I mean, it's really good to see the depth coming through. I mean, Laban had a good game. I mean, great debut for him. Uh, Tavanga had a few. Cases of the dropsies. <laughs> you, you never like to see that with Tavanga, especially him for some reason, but he finished the game strong. Um, Bunty, he's impressing me more and more every week. Every time I see him, my, my, my uh, dislike for him starts to slowly fade away and turn into love. It's a love-hate relationship. But wow, it's changing. dislike's like, a strong word. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. Um, but yeah, it's just, giving opportunities to everyone else. Tamara Martin steps up in the sixth jersey. Like, yeah, I don't actually feel that that worried. You know, I feel pretty good. You're good. I, put, I saw yeah, Bunty I also picked up. So Bunty Sorry. also picked up something uh, during the game as well. So we got iced up. But Buddha, you've got uh, you've got something you've just messaged us with in regards to uh, to the jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, I, if you look at this, this came through on one of the chat groups I'm on, so... Uh, Mitchie Barnett, I don't know what his, the caption on his uh, post is, but he's, uh, yeah, he's got the sticky spray, you know, start of the game, spraying all up, they put, put it on, the, on their chest or one of their hands and stuff, uh, and Jazz has come through with an absolute gold message to kind of really kind of highlight his, uh, his poor hands, uh, Jazz underscore Tavanga writes, I need shitloads of that. <laughs> I <laughs> love it, love it, Jazzy, love it. How many of you thought it was going to be? Oh, I was just going to say on your, uh, on just on that point of um, the the depth or that the kind of people backing up. I thought it was a crucial week with five first choice players out uh, to go away, and this would be kind of for most Warriors fans. Like, how would we go about the 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 lack? You know, losing. 40% of your starting lineup as well, 35% 30, of your starting lineup. And for me, it looked like guys just slotted into our system and they did their job. And yeah, you're probably not going to get the like standout stuff from some of those key players that, that, that were missing, but the drop off isn't huge, right? So, mm. you know, it's, it's nice to know that maybe in years gone past, we just needed the individual brilliance of those players. And, you know, without them, we just had a massive drop-off. Now, you know, you put quality players into the system, the first choice goes down, the second choice goes in, does a job. That's right. Um, Moneta, we've, we've covered off a lot of the uh, <clears throat> the point already about, you know, the guys stepping up, but 
you know, who's who's really impressed you individually in terms of guys coming in to, to you know fill a space and and do a role to to cover. Uh, Pompey, I thought did pretty well. I mm. thought he made a lot of meters mm. for all the hate that he gets. I can see why Webster um, puts him in because um, Webster we trust. So um, yeah, he was getting he was uh, getting post was it post meter gains whatever. <laughs> and so yeah, he was doing great. Um, Tim Meme stepped up. He was great. Mm. Um, you know, and it just goes back to the point like man up, um, next man up. Um, as Webster terms it, um, they've got a great structure that helps um, allow people just to know what their role is. And if anyone knows what it is, you know, anyone can do that. So, yeah, no, um, Team M, Pompey, Laban, they all play good. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I'm not worried about injuries anymore. You know, I used to be in the past, but not anymore. Apart from if Sean Johnson gets injured, I'll be a bit worried. <laughs> I actually thought um, the Martin, he Martin, he probably played... I would say maybe for me his, his best game as a warrior mm. um, and I actually did see a great uh, speaking of posts this is on the uh, New Zealand Warriors Till I Die page so the post was uh, from Caleb Tunner so I'm just going to give credit for um, for this little post uh, the post starts off a little bit um, negatively we win by 30 and all we want to do is cry about Latrell ha 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 the next part is what made me laugh how's about cry for Metcalf because Tim Aide just ripped that jersey off him like Shogun did, like Shogun took that crazy um, horse patch off Boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm not quite sure that's for me personally, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I just appreciated that take. I was like, he, he played well. He played really well, and kind of gave me flashbacks to last week's um, expense account because Greg Spence laid it out to us that um, Tamani Martin and Sean Johnson had a better winning record as as a pair. So um, it was kind of like not just the ingredients, but the uh, how they how they go together, right? So uh, yeah. we were calling yeah. um, Sean and um, and Timidi like steak and cheese, which I think is a good one. <laughs> Sean's probably the steak and Timidi's the cheese, maybe. I think that's I think that works. Um, steak and mushroom. Uh, <laughs> I'm still thinking they're pretty even, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> what are, they what offer are different Luke things, Sean? Though. Yeah. Oh, we didn't have wouldn't have stats on uh, on Luke and Sean, but uh, no, I mean the the, the pie. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh! If Tamari and Sean are steak and cheese, BP Pepper's thing, bacon and egg, yeah. bacon and egg. Yeah. Yeah. What makes Sean and Luke then? I wonder. Nada, mince so, and cheese, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Mince and cheese, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nada, nada. Sorry. From that, oh, nada yeah. bakery in Johnsonville. Gold a, medal, gold medalist. A, yeah, that's right. Gold medal winning. Uh, table on a plate. Oh yeah, <laughs> table on a plate. <laughs> Did you oh, notice that? Did you notice that Chanel just got a little cheeky fifteen minutes run at seven as well, just uh, mm. just to make sure, you know, give SJ a break. And if he unfortunately if he was to go down, I think you know, CHT would have to fill that space as well. I, mean, I should have given like, Egan a break. I'm always worried about him breaking. Yeah, same. I thought that oh. was. I was like, get Egan off. Yeah. I was more worried about Egan, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wayne, get protect off Wayne. the uh, gotta protect the chosen ones. But man, Wade Egan, uh fellas. <laughs> let's get into Wade Egan, because my god. Uh I went through the replay today and sheesh, he just everything I looked at it that he was involved in, I was like, wow, this guy is just something else. Uh, but it will go to you for uh for the, the, the review on Wade and what he is he is doing for us on attack. Oh, Wayne is just, he's his own attacking structure himself, right? Like, only we got, a lot of play revolves around SJ, as per normal, uh, especially, you know, block plays and putting guys in gaps, but half of it can't be done without Wayne's uh, deception coming out of dummy half. He's, and I think he's, we've obviously seen him throughout the podcast, right? Uh, at times and at points, some of you fellas are critical on him, and some more than others. Some more than others. And we <laughs> oh, you were part to... of that beginning too. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't like. Oh, let's go back. You we'll go back and listen. You know, tape. I was <laughs> go back to the tape. Oh yeah, the I old was uh, it, was the <laughs> it was all of us. <laughs> uh, the treadmill was there, yeah. But I, I think we could see glimpses of his ability. Mm. But I think he's just laid it and laid it and laid it. Like even so, you, first of all, we start with his. Uh, pass, move one way, pass the other way. That's mm. starting to 
to actually, well, we know he has it, but he's doing it with pace and power and, and it's really quick. So that's amazing. And that just opens up the defense, holds that side in, means if they're clock, clocking off, then they've got to get back on. So those forwards get a roll on. Uh, you saw the, obviously the runs. And I think everyone's like, dummy half's going run, just run, run. And don't some dummy half pick up the ball and run. And that's great, but you, you, there's no point in running when you've got two markers. Mm. Like, wait for the marker, wait for a mismatch. So every time there's a one marker on the ground or only one marker or is a quick play the ball to the other marker's not square, that's when he chooses to run. So, you know, you don't have to run. And sometimes if a game doesn't allow you that, then you won't, then you don't. But he's picking his moments well, clearly seeing what he's doing when he's busting or putting pressure on those defenders, gets out to that A defender and they're struggling and obviously that that one he put a nice backhand ball through to to mighty is amazing uh and then we've got the this the deception with the the part the dummy long and then that look the other way and pop short which mm. was just gee i think we used to roll a little bit of that hey, back in yeah. the day st bridget's yep. style yeah it's reminiscent definitely reminiscent yeah just just beautiful that is the nicest dummy half play i think i've seen Hold on a second. Years. Most of your passes were forward, though. <laughs> 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 that, that, that was in high school. That was, he developed you were that. More he developed that. He added layers <laughs> to his game and then developed the ball. <laughs> like Wade Egan. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Pass and keep going. Mo- yeah, momentum. just keep going. Oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd lean on the uh, on that uh, Wellington breeze, eh? You just chuck it up high, and then wind it just. <laughs> no. I was like, oh, they go three minutes. Nah, no, it's a try. Let's try. Let's lay on. Lay on. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Wade must be the number one hooker in the game at the moment, surely, because he's doing shit that no other hooker hooker in the game can do. I think so. Like, no oh, one else can do it. I, I watched most of the footy on the weekend, and no one plays the way he does. Yeah. Yeah, I up agree. He, up he can, but I don't think he quite has the team that allows him to, mm. right? Up, um, yeah. But he up can. Up the closest. I, I think, yeah, Wayne is, I mean, if I was Madge, I kind of selfishly want him to be selected, but not necessarily play. Mm. So he goes into origin camp, he gets all originated up, but then he can come back to us on the weekend to play. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing that's really interesting as well, uh, watching Wade's play, particularly from this week. It was almost like they need to invent a new stat for him. Because you have, you got, uh, in, in, in the stats, official stats, you got line breaks, line break assists. You got running meters. But you don't have running meter assists. And by that I mean those particular players that you mentioned, but away, he'll look one way and give it over to, to Mitch Barnett on the other side. And all of a sudden, Mitch Barnett has got at least 10 metres clear space in front of him to just move us forward. And he was, he was doing that a lot. I was like, man, this guy is actually gaining us so many run metres just by doing that little bit of deception. And uh, I'm starting, he's, he's getting a few nicknames as well. Obviously, we called him the Prestige pretty early. Uh, and I still think that works really well for how he, he does it. And that was pure um, Prestige on that, um, uh, that try where he dished it off to Timaide Martin in the second half, you know. Uh, the, the three parts of the magic trick. Uh, but also, um, just thinking, he, he could also be perhaps uh, nicknamed Magneto because just the way he attracts those three, four guys right around the ruck, you know? <laughs> he goes to pass it and then he just holds it and then they, they have to stay on him and then he'll, okay, I'll pass it now. And then the next guy's just, you know, he's either got a gap or, or just a bit of space to manoeuvre with. Um, and yeah, I, I was, man, I, I think a lot of people were just getting really excited about what Wade is doing. But it's starting to stir up. Moneta, you, you mentioned uh, a little bit of a joke about this from the, the press conference. Uh, the, the, the looming eligibility war for the services of Wade Egan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just in the press conference, um, you know, one of the reporters was saying that very same thing about, you know, he's obviously a potential for New South Wales and Webster was going on. Tohugu's Oh, maybe for the Kiwis, I think. Eh? He's like, and Webster like, tells him to shut up, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. No, not a chance. Um, but yes, I'm hoping he does actually choose the Kiwis, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, could you imagine that? Maybe Stacey's like, hey, bro, I'll give you, give you some shares in one of my subways or something. Does he still do that? <laughs> <laughs> just, just on that point, though, just 
not only obviously Wayne's doing fantastic work, but the ability if he they, they've obviously seen a mark on the ground for those plays, right where he's burst through the middle. Uh, he's set a mark on the ground, and he did that last week, right against the Knights. You, then you've got, but you've also got Chance, you've got Roger floating around, you've got Sean and Tamidi, and last week was Luke. So that it's not obviously he's just not going isolated by himself. That as a as a unit, they're seeing it. They're kind of like in tune, right? They're like, right, that's there. Let's flood that space. And, mm. and actually, Cock Blocker Roach was talking about um, the the fact that. Damien Cook, who's renowned for getting out of dummy half right with extreme pace, and he was trying to do that, didn't have anyone with him. No one pushing through as well. So as much as as Wayne is who's you know, doing fantastic stuff, he's also you know you've also got an attacking unit that is right in tune, and it is reminiscent of the Storm, the the uh, Slater, this Cameron Smith, the Cronks, mm. uh, those little plays they used to have. I saw um, on uh, I think the Footy Show Channel Nine, old Brad Fittler was talking about uh, the the diamond, oh, yeah, the diamond sort of formation, using everyone in your spine, your one, your six, your seven, and your nine, and that was exactly that was exactly the formation on a couple of those tries. Uh, one guy in particular who was linking well, but has mentioned him just before as well. Um, Isaac, we'll throw this one to you, bro. Uh, is is having Chan's back? That's that's elevating what Wade is doing even further. Yeah, I mean, we talk about that try. You guys talked about that try with uh, Egan and the flick back inside to Tamara. But the try that really got me, uh, got me turned on <laughs> was that one with the double pump, man. Like, Ooh. fuck, you know, like, that, was, that was sexy. The double yeah. pump to Tohu running on the outside and then Chan's running that line. But, you know, he almost had the cameraman fold. It was just <laughs> that good. And Ooh. it's like, you know, it's, it's the pass long, the dummy long, eh? It's the yeah. dummy long. Hey, dummy long, and then, and then the, he passed it short. And then yeah. Short. And it was no way you could. That was all timing. There was no way you could see him coming. No, I don't think no you way. can't. You can't see past what one eighty. Nah, all... Well, mere mere mortals can't see. <laughs> <laughs> the peripheral vision. Well, maybe Wade's got eyes in the back of his head. I don't know, but I think that's what CNK offers. I mean, you know, obviously RCS is a, a class and of his own in the fullback position. But CNK is, you know, it's not far behind and he offers something different. And it's a line like that. I'm not saying RTS couldn't run a line like that or, or wouldn't, but CNK does that more often than not. He mm-hmm. just knows where to pop up in those sorts of situations. And, yeah, sure, he had, he had one blip early on in the game, but he quickly forgot about that and he just started chewing up the meters um, for the rest of the game, was just popping up everywhere. He makes such a massive difference in the kick return game to CNK. He seems to be the leader for those wingers, the, you know, the back five, basically, to start chewing up some yardage. It all starts with him. And if there's any sort of momentum loss, he'll take another, he'll take another hit up yeah. and try to gain some momentum back. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was he almost... 263 metres. Oh, exactly. This game back. And okay. it was almost okay. like... Didn't miss a step. Yeah, a couple of those sets where he'll, he'll bring the initial return... And then by about the fourth tackle, he's doing another one. I'm kind of sitting there like, oh, bro, take it easy, man. Like, you just got back, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. just... I, I can't wait to see DWZ and him play again. Because uh, when those two are on the field, they, they seem to gel really well. And CNK sets up DWZ well through the corner. Mm. I've noticed when it was Tua Peggy, uh, and he was great too. But um, he wasn't quite able to set up those same plays. Yeah. We that, called it um, open there when we were watching the yeah. game. They yeah. try that, um, who scored Roger. in the corner? Yeah, right. Roger scored in the corner. Yes, yeah. yes. CNK's timing, just in a it's, very it's, short side. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So just I'm looking forward him. to seeing DWZ yeah. Um, yeah. with CNK. <sighs> he just gave him enough of a cushion, eh, to be able to yeah. just just sort of manoeuvre around and get the ball uh, yeah. down in the corner. Um, he just gets it. What, yeah. One other thing I want to talk about the back five, though, is um, Montoya, he seems to be in the past two or three weeks to me, um, playing a hell of a lot better, better with his carries mm. as well. He's added like a little spin move where he'll, he'll engage in the tackle but sort of spin out. I don't know if you guys have noticed that now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the mean, circle button. A, yeah, I mean, he's always, he's always <laughs> had a little spin. A little like, a little <laughs> yeah, yeah. Salsa stick. <laughs> yeah. But that's the forbidden dance. 
<laughs> no, you're right, bro. It's, it has been really good, and it has been a noticeable difference. Like, it's just been a couple of weeks. It's like, man, something the the confidence has just flooded back because for a long time, um, you know, he he was playing like that, and that's what we got used to. And then he was just off for a little bit, and we were like, "What's up with you know, Marcelo?" He wasn't he wasn't playing terribly, but just to get that little bit of that little bit of swagger back um, was was nice to see. Um, Moneda, it, you know, it wasn't a great Bunnies team, but. Um, you know, I guess the good thing for us is we won, we won by 30 points. Um, mm. But the key question is, how much better can this team get? Oh. I would say they, they can get better, obviously. Um, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I think they I can't see much. Well, I'm, not, I'm not being biased, too, but I can't see much weakness at the moment. Their defense looked great. Uh, again, against the Bunnies, I thought. Um, but I thought, you know, they get them to four. You know, there was a few missed tackles at the beginning. Uh, I was a bit worried, but they were they had showed a lot of resilience and kind of just played simple. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I mean, as long as I keep that structure and maybe just you know keep that patience going, um, they should be fine. But I know who we're versing. I can't remember Manly. who we're versing. Manly, Manly. Manly. Okay, that should be a bit tougher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think as long as I set to their structures and um, kind of just get better each game, this should be fine, I think. Um, yeah. You know, I think um, they've got a good you know, way of playing now where anyone can fit in. So, yeah. I don't think you want to be giving the, uh, especially the manly backline, that amount of space that um, the Rabbitohs oh, no, should no, no, I, like, I think, yeah, actually, to your first point, um, the first 20 minutes I was shooting my pants a bit. Because they were just drifting it to the side a lot, and seemed to make a lot of meters and stuff like that. So, you probably need to watch out for the first twenty minutes, maybe. So, yeah. Now, uh, but just before we jump out of here, bro, um, what sort of tweaks are you expecting for the the game against the Manly Men? Uh, tweaks. I mean, we played a pretty perfect seventy-five minutes, right? So. You know, you take that moving forward into this game, you just consider where Manly are. And Manly are a funny team, eh? You know, they're obviously another bogey team of ours. Um, if not one of the top two bogey teams we have. Uh, but Manly as a team have been hot and cold. They were extremely hot on uh, last night. You know, they just took down the, the reigning uh, premiers. They took the to town, really. And they had a massive power game. Like, And I think that's the tweaks for us is we're going to have to we slow that middle up as much as we can. They are a massive middle uh, with big edges as well. So that's, that scares me, and we're going to have to do some work to make sure that we can hold them up in the middle and we can't get caught wide too much. And Luke Brooks and DCE are actually a pretty, pretty good little combination. Luke Brooks is playing his best football, man. Like mm. He just has no pressure at all, and uh, he's linking really well with Turbo, so... Um, and they've got Cola, who's as fast as Moneta. It looks like Moneta too. So uh, <laughs> that boy can run. So we've got to be mindful of that. But I do think they, they're a Seabowl team. And a Seabowl team can be a good one week. And they can be shit the next week. So mm. I think we can play on that. But I'm just worried that we don't match some physicality in the middle. Until they meet us. Because they met the, they met the Panthers last night and more. And they got the chocolates and... I think Webby actually said that, you know, he actually felt confident, he was happy with the team because we didn't try to didn't try to go around the Rabbitohs, they went through the Rabbitohs. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. What we need to do. yeah for sure. Um, yeah, going to be going to be an interesting one. Uh, we'll be um, coming back uh, in a couple of days' time or in a day's time, whenever, depending when you watch this. Uh, we'll be coming back on Tuesday night with Teams Day to uh, to run through. Isaac, you got a point before we go, right? Can I bring up one more point? It's just really just <laughs> ripped my undies. What does Latrell Mitchell have to do to get 10 in the bin or get sent off? Yes, he Yeah. He forearm strikes Sean Johnson in the face. He gets his arm in between Tohu Harris's legs and almost dumps him on his head. I mean, what, what does he have to do? He got... Mm. Uh, the the, the, the Tohu thing, Tohu, he said in the presser, there wasn't much in it. Like, you're not allowed yeah, to lift. I know there he wasn't much. He, 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 he called him and held him. But, yeah, I mean, uh, on the back of that, 
it was a serious elbow to Sean Johnson's face. And uh, Luke Troll, to his credit, knew it because he put his hand yeah. on the back of his head and was like, yeah. oh, I fucked up here. Yeah. Well, I, can't, <laughs> I can't help but think, again, and this is biased, but fuck it, if a Warriors player had done that, oh, yeah. if it, let's just say had a, a Tavanga done that, he'd be fucking out of there. Yeah. What, happened, what happened last week? Didn't he knock out um, uh, the Fox? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that yeah. for me is more of an issue, right? Like it's the outcome part. I mean, that to Shawnee he wasn't great, but Shawnee was like caught it and they had a little cuddle and you know, but like a play like that where you slide and you take someone out that for me is where you tend. But back to your point, yeah, I mean he's much maligned, isn't he? You know, like he the NRL go too hard on him, then they feel like the you know, kind of the poster boy. But then he's the bad boy when he has his uh, his triple M rant with all the swear words and you know so and then he and then he gets subject to a lot of racism. It's yeah, it's hard, yeah. Eh? They they get on him. They get the media. Anything he does, you know. Yeah, he's a bit of a lightning rod for that sort of stuff. Eh? That's right. Latrell drops the toast on the kitchen floor, gets in the papers the next day. You know, like <laughs> come on. Uh, while we're talking about refereeing calls. Uh, I've got to stick up for our boy, um, Freddie Lussick. I don't know if you boys saw the uh, uh, yeah. footage of the unfortunate... Yeah, yeah, I saw that. ...in the um, New South Wales Cup game. Yeah. Yeah, uh, where Freddie uh, went to charge down a kick, and it, it went a bit astray, uh, and, and Lachlan Elias ended up basically kicking, I think, Freddie's knee, uh, and, and ended up breaking Elias's um, leg, unfortunately. Uh, re- kind of just one of those things, a little bit... Just a bit freak, of a freak accident. Freak accident. accident. Yeah, but um, I, I was a bit worried that we, the referees are getting to the point where they are they're, they're actually penalising based on the outcome of the injury rather than the act itself mm. i.e. what we talked about uh, Latrell elbows a guy in the face gets penalised for it uh, Freddie tries to charge down a kick and because the guy ends up breaking his leg uh, just out of freak circumstances he gets sent off now I, I I, I've seen a lot of reaction, people who have seen the incident online, not uh, not even Warriors fans, but just general you know, rugby league pundits just looking at it going, there's no way in hell that is a send-off. Um, so I, I just wanted to um, I wanted to stick up for Freddie because um, yeah. he's, he's a good friend of the podcast and I felt for him. You can see he was... He was pretty... Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, he's a nice guy. You know? He's, he's yeah. not out there trying to bloody um, hurt anyone like that. And, and it was just, just one of those things, bro. I, I think... Yeah, well, I saw it and it was, it was an accident. He didn't mean to do it. He was just going for that charge down. Last 20 seconds, he was trying to create a magic play. And when he saw it happen, he was just like, he had his hands in his head and he was just couldn't, you could tell he felt super crap about it. So, yeah. It's probably um, the big difference between the two, you know, the two examples, Latrell and, and, and then Freddie Lussick. Freddie Lussick's um, movement was you know, his intention is all part of the game. It's a charge down. You want to charge down a kick. Where Luttrell, throwing a, an elbow, arguably not part of the game, you know? And it's the different intentions. <laughs> not <laughs> anymore. Yeah, Since the game's not gone anymore. soft. It's not the 80s. It's not the 80s. Uh, no <laughs> coat hangers and whatnot. But you, you know what I mean? Like, you, what, what, you're going to outlaw charging down the kick altogether? Is that mm. what you're going to only... do to prevent someone breaking their leg in a freak accident? Mm. But the thing is that they have... They had, you know, like a hip drop, you know, it's a particular tackle play motion for kickers that puts them into some serious injury territory. And they do, and they more, more it's focused on the drop goal, right? They talked about that when there's been drop goal charge downs and people attacking legs. And then now obviously their intention is to charge the ball down, and there's no malice to go and hit the leg, but they know that in that motion there's a high, high injury risk. So that's the NRL have gone uh, to focus on trying but, to ban. But so is an elbow to, stop to the that. face. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. But, but like, the reality if is, I felt it's, though... it's going to be treated after the fact, and he's got three weeks for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He could have got yeah. a broken jaw, Sean Johnson. Yeah, same and he would, have got, he would have got eight weeks for it. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. They, they are sorting that. But the yeah. NRL have clearly gone to like protect playmakers. You know, the, the cheap, the, the dog shot is gone. Mm. Yeah, but you touch somebody, even if you touch a playmaker, and doesn't is anyone who's coming to the line and passing, they know that reason they've got rid of that is because it's a high injury contact. It's whiplash. Yeah. 
it's a high push. probability. And, and unfortunately, yeah. the kicker thing that is regardless, I mean, and that's the fine line, right? Is the is there a way, and this is where the game's getting at, is there a way to be able to put pressure on the kicker, but in a safe way so you don't they don't have any legs? Yeah. You but know? I mean, if you're not if yeah. you're not actually you know contacting the guy on his body, like Freddie was kind of to the side, yeah. going for the ball, and it was only because Ilias kind of kicked to the side and where his leg kind of flicked up. Yeah, it was like it's, it's almost like if you go to tackle someone, and because they try to step you and you know break their ankle, <laughs> then you you get penalised for it. It's it's like man, like sometimes. I feel like there's yeah, got to yeah. be a little bit of wriggle room yeah, in those circumstances. There is. Just but to... the, the kicker is in a vulnerable position. They talk about the kicker being in a vulnerable position. And that, that's something they brought in a while ago. You know, they, and look, you don't see as many. How, when's the last time you take kickers out in the air when they're kicking? Mm. They, you used to even just touch them yeah. in the air. So I'm not, it's a it's a real massive grey area, and I'm not saying yeah. he deserves yeah. it, but it's, a, it's, it's where the, the game has decided that particular play can cause a particular type of nasty injury. Yeah. We need to find a way to, to take that out of the mindset of the player. But it's hard because he's it's in the heat of the game and it's trying to do a you know a positive play. Yeah. So what's the reverse of that? Like you don't want it to like, oh he's kicking, let's just stand and wait to let him kick. Mm. You know, I, mm. I, I it's really confusing. Yeah. And like what is the, the best way? I mean I Ideally, if you got the red card, if it was at the end of the game, you'd like to think that doesn't get a serious punishment because it shouldn't deserve a serious punishment. But if it was red carded in the game, and, and I don't know whether the game does that, like, you know, look on the balance of it and go, was the penalty served in the game? Yes, you know. Unfortunately, I, I, I do think they do the penalty and they do extras. I, I, yeah, he, he did, like, I would get... I was like looking at the play quite carefully, going, "Oh shit! Did he go for the player's legs mm, mm, mm. Like, deliberately?" I don't but he didn't. Know. I think we went back to Jared's point. He was actually coming to the side, trying to charge the ball down. So I kind of call it more of a freak accident, more so because I've seen some players go more intent towards the legs. Yeah, yes. they used to slide. Yeah, and yeah. Like, this is this is where yeah. Fred Lassick, yeah. he yeah. has no, you know, he. I don't think he has a bad bone in his body. Like he he was. Go and it was just a freakish accident. Mm. Like you know, you, you you could say the same for um, Metcalf with that tackle. You know, exactly. that he got from exactly Brazil. Right. That yeah. was that was freakish. He yeah. broke his tibia. And you're and not so, a, you're not expecting Frizzell to get sin binned or bloody yeah. sent off. Even though like, fans were going, oh, he should be sin binned, bloody hell. Yeah, I, I think they've just got the category of kicking a kicker kicking, mm. and they've got it wrong because I think they outlawed it when people were just diving at legs. Yeah, we're just yeah, blatant diving the... legs. So yeah. they've actually categor- categorised it wrong. Yeah. And I think the, the melees happened, there was a scrap afterwards as well, and I think to kind of, perhaps the heat of the moment, to cool it down, to make it look serious, to send him off, and well, there's no time left anyway. So, so they really, should have one of the bunnies too, to be fair. Yeah. Like, really, the refs got it, got it wrong. It's not the player's fault. I mean, it's unfortunate that the outcome was Lockie Elias had broken his leg, but really the refs fucked up. Like they they made the wrong call. They, they I mean they okay penalize, maybe penalize Freddie Lussick for the charge down or attacking the player, attacking the kicker or whatever. But you know to Jared's point, yeah. because of what happened and the injury that occurred, the outcome for Freddie Lussick was far yeah. harsher than it really should have been. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the, the and correct me if I'm wrong. Red card should always be if there was in clear intent. Mm. clear intent yeah. to, to do that like I know actually funny you say that I'm going to talk about red cards uh, and I know we're going over but I rewatched the Mitch Barnett elbow he did against Panthers a couple of years ago before he's yeah. and yeah, like oh my gosh and I like, even yeah. talks about Mitch being like you know he's you know, he's on the big dogs right and you're like he's got I mean obviously he brings a lot of aggression as well and you didn't you wouldn't normally see something like that but oh my gosh like that was yeah. just you're um, right Boom, see you later, drop that guy, eh? And you thought, well, see, the, the marker I look at is, someone raised a good point. They said, if Ilias doesn't break his leg, is that even a penalty? I don't think it is. <laughs> I, think it's a penalty. I don't even think it's a penalty. That, 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 but they go with that whole kind of protector. I mean, I guess it comes back to the point where those <laughs> stupid rules are created to go, mm. oh, that's a, an activity that probably can cause issue. Well, then now they're going to, like, you know, they're even thinking about you know, stopping the kickoffs. That's stupid. Yes. You know, like, 
Yeah. It's, it's taking it too far. Yeah. You know, like sometimes accidents happen. It's a physical game, and I know there's elements where you need to prevent as much as you can. But now they, they're thinking about, oh, maybe we should just stop the kickoffs now, yeah. so they don't get the momentum coming from, you know, from around ten. Yeah. My What's worry. Happen? My worry is it's going to start veering towards the way that union's gone, and it's just turned people off. Like you yes. know that whole head contact thing where. Yep. An attacking player can sidestep basically at full speed and if the defender's not coming in the right angle and they butt heads or whatever, the defender is the one that get, is, gets sent off. Yep. Even though the attacker is the one that's made the decision to sidestep and they've coincidentally smashed their heads together. Mm. Like, there's yep. no intention for the attacker to headbutt the other dude or smash, smash his head. Yep. But it's just happened. Like, yep. This is the same thing like with Lusik. It's just yep. happened. But controversially, controversially, and I get that, like, you know, the <laughs> kickoff thing, but I actually don't mind a drop restart because I like another contested possession option. One thing I, you know, like, I do love the off the back fence smashing into each other. I love that, don't get me wrong. But there's something about, like, having another way of contesting possession. You know, like you could do in rugby, right? You know, that's. If they had to ban it, I wouldn't mind a, a drop dropout option. Interesting. I love, Interesting. I love, I love possession being ability to get possession back. Contestable. Without, mm. Contestable. Without the kind of format of you kick to me and then I bring it back as well. But yeah, I, I, yeah. in saying that, I was watching that Manly game last night and Nathan Brown, who will, who will want to run at us this weekend, he was flying <laughs> into, the, into the line. Eh? It was awesome. You want to get those moments like Hytra Kosseni. I still yeah. remember those moments right. when you from the. You know, <laughs> The flowing hair. Yeah. Different, different time though, different era. A few different uh, Street Fighter moves back in those days as well. Yeah, that, that <laughs> elbow was normal. Holy cow! Wait, 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 that's right. We've uh, we've gone slightly over time. We almost could have done a full episode on uh, Freddie Lussick uh, saga by itself, uh, but yeah, boys, it's been fun. Um, my name is Jerry Cronin on behalf of Daniel Fadakota, Isaac Sauce, and Moni the Sauce. Uh, Good luck for the, uh, the, the the big game coming up, Warriors. Uh, and we'll catch you on Teams Day in a couple of days. Time to run through the lineups. And, uh, yeah, just remember, up the Waz and no cheapies. <laughs> All cheapies. <laughs>